In this video, I'm gonna tell you about five things you can do right now to start growing your plumbing company. Number one, learn to network. Networking is pretty much free. Learn to get out and build relationships with other business owners. This can literally help you every single day. The reason being, by getting out and building these relationships, remember, people don't just buy your company because you gave it a great name. People buy from people they know, love, trust, and are connected to. Get out and get connected. Networking does not take a lot of time, but remember, in the beginning, you've got a lot more time than you've got money. This is a great way to spend your time to help make your phone ring. Number two, Use a CRM, a customer relationship management system. Gather people's email addresses. You wanna be able to email them. You wanna be able to connect with them. You wanna be able to talk with them, to tell them when you're running specials, to do different things. My CRM is not for sales. My CRM is to just stay in contact with people. Remember, people buy from people they know, love, trust, and are connected to. Stay connected, stay top of mind. If you're not doing anything else other than networking and CRM, emailing your customers, emailing your clients, letting them know what else is going on. Is there a change? Is there a new product out that could be amazing for them? What kind of things can you give them for free, give them value, but stay where you're talking to them? Because if you're staying where you're talking to them now, you're building that relationship. Number three, specialization. We specialize in slab leaks and leak detection. The reason being, there weren't a lot of companies around here doing it and doing it right. Don't get me wrong, I've got some great companies around me that do it, but I've also got a lot of companies around me that just bought any equipment they could find and started doing it. Don't get me wrong, I didn't start out with the most expensive equipment, but I got there as soon as I could. Now, I think I've got some of the best electronic listening equipment and cameras and the hoses and everything that I need to do all the different things that I do, but pick a specialization. Slab leaks and leak detection may not be yours. It may just be drain cleaning. Maybe you get the best sewer machines there are. Maybe you get the best hydro jetters they make. There's a lot of different opportunities out there of things that you can do. I started out as a green company. I could have just gone in and focused on rainwater harvesting, rainwater reclamation. How do we take it? How do we use it? How do we gather this water and reuse this water to where we're not using city water that we're having to pay for? There's a lot of different things out there that you can specialize in. Pick something that there's not very many people around you doing and get really good at it. Become the go-to person, become the trusted advisor that people think of when they think of that. That will help separate you from everybody else out there. Number four, teach people about what you do. That's how I've learned to use LinkedIn. Build my relationships with people that I can help. Because if I can help them, and if I can bring value to them, this is something that if I go out and do, can really benefit them a lot. Another thing to do is build those relationships with real estate agents. Now I can go to real estate agents, to the companies, and actually go in and talk about plumbing. Explain to them what all they should be consulting their buyers with on what to do before they buy a house. Maybe a sewer water test, maybe a complete plumbing inspection. How much money are they spending? How old is the house? There's a lot of different things and a lot of different information that I can give them to really help them become an educated real estate agent for their buyers. Also for their sellers though, what things is it that maybe the buyer's asking for that, you know what, I really don't feel like I should have to do this. Learn to be that person. One thing that's funny is when real estate agents call me, I always ask them, are you representing the buyer or are you representing the seller? Because it may be a different argument or a different way that I need to look at it. I'm gonna be honest both ways and I'm never gonna lie to people about it, but you need to understand both sides of the coin because you never know when you're gonna to have to argue for one side or the other. And they could still both be right. For example, I had a buyer one time say, look, I want them to change out the water heater. I kept saying, why? It's working. They said, yeah, but it's 10 years old. It was a six year water heater, 10 years old. They wanted a new one. I told them, I said, to be honest, I don't see how that seller is going to give that to you because it's doing exactly what it's supposed to do. So you need to be able to understand both sides. But I did tell the real estate agent, you can always go to that seller and say, look, this is a big concern for my customer and it is 10 years old. We're not asking for a lot else. Is that something you'd be willing to do? Understand both sides. Give them the information that they need to make the right decision. Because if you help them in the long run, they're gonna wanna help you. Number five, 
hire the right coaches and consultants. The coaches, consultants, mentors, whatever you need. And it may not be somebody you have to hire. I've got people that call me all the time and say, look, you mentor me. I watch your videos all the time. I love what you say about becoming the best plumber that I can be. I want to study. I want to get better. I want to practice. A mentor is not somebody that you have to talk to all the time. It may be somebody you watch from afar and say, hey, I want to do things like they do. Then again, I've got people that call me about coaching and consulting on plumbing companies and social media all the time. You can do whatever you want to do. Remember, one of my first business coaches, Michael Gerber, the E-Myth books. What do you have to do to grow from a company of one to an enterprise of 10,000. And I tell you, I learned a lot from his coaching, from his consulting, from the classes that I sat in. I learned a lot. I understood when I was finished exactly what I needed to do. Then I hired other people or watched other people to learn how to do it. Now there's a lot of things here and I understand that. Sometimes starting a company can be overwhelming, but what I will tell you is a couple of things that really helped me. Number one, always know what you're working towards. Always know what your goal is, where you want to be. What is it you're building? And every day ask yourself, is what I'm doing today helping me get here or is it taking me off course? Then again, getting off course may be where you need to go because that end goal may change. And you've always got to be able to look at it and see is what you're working towards going to be better than what you could possibly do over here. Sometimes you need to pivot. You need to change. Keep your mind open. Understand what you're working for, but if better opportunities come along, think about that option and look at it and see, does it fit in your wheelhouse? Do me a favor. If you do any of these things, please leave me a comment down below and let me know what works best for you. We all do things different and I completely understand that, but these are five things that you can do to help you start growing your business right now. Make that phone ring. That's what it's all about. I'm Roger Wakefield, Lead AP, the expert plumber. I'll see you in the next video if you don't get flushed.